My father told me that in 1937, Manuel Quezon was not satisfied because until then no definitive biography of Rizal had been written by a Filipino. The next year, in 1938, Quezon staged the Rizal Biography Writing Contest to encourage authors to write about the national hero. My father, Carlos, was awarded honorable mention for having written The Great Malayan. Alongside his work was cited a biography that had an unusual twist because it was not based on public documents but rather on family lore. This biography was written by a member of the Rizal family, a talented writer fresh out of Assumption College. Her name was Asuncion Lopez Bantu. Why do we tell stories? Why do we share tales about our pasts? The manuscript was never published and uh, so basically we, uh, we suggested to uh, Mrs. Bantug that uh, she might uh, uh, consider uh, having the manuscript published by Intramuros administration. Every family has a history, yet ours isn't quite like any others. We trace our roots to Dr. Jose Rizal, the Philippine national hero. When he was still in his mother's stomach and she was praying in the church, you know that. And You're then right. he cried. Maybe he already knew that, <laughs> you know, he was going to have a tough time. <laughs> We ourselves forget that he was also simply Pepe, a beloved son and brother. He, he addresses his elder brother, Nyor Pasiano, meaning to say Mr. Pasiano. Oh. And that was the um, rule in the, among the brothers and sister. Elder one is addressed Nyora Saturnina, Nyora Sisa by a younger sister or a younger brother. And Pepe, they call him Pepe. Like any other young man, he went through the pangs of first love. With Leonor Rivera, he learned its pain. No, La Cisa was afraid to tell Pepe about the death of Leonor. So he, she hesitated, then she was brave enough on that night to tell him Pepe, Leonor has died. For two days, he, Pepe could not talk. Oh, he was dumbfounded. He had friends who were dear to him, among whom were Ferdinand Blumentritt, Juan Luna, Marcelo del Pilar, Graciano Lopez Jaina, and Felix Resurrección Hidalgo. Sometimes, you know, you feel, uh, am I worthy to be uh, I know. That's why we, me personally, I don't really like blurting out, I'm a, I'm a descendant of Jose Rizal. Of course, it's really by no merit, you know, I was just born into the family. Um, but at the same time, I sort of take it seriously in the sense that uh, I wouldn't want to do anything that would tarnish the reputation of the family or uh, what the, our national hero had done for the country. Someone should always tell the story of why he was different from other Lolos lest we forget even the smallest details of his life and are left with nothing more than a name. I would just memorize his birthday, memorize the priest who baptized him, memorize his whole name. Sometimes we put him so much on a pedestal that we forget about him totally. The lessons we should be drawing from him to be able to improve our own country is not there, it's not being learned. What do we keep in our memories? What must we remember? In telling us about Lolo Jose, our elders also told us of their own heroism. Grandparent to parent, parent to child, and legacy is passed on. My grandparents would um, well tell me about incidents of, uh, let's say, from the other side of the family, Mauricio Cruz, 
who was the son of Maria Rizal, um, his wife, my grandmother, would say that, uh, well, your Lolo Morris was the, the only nephew allowed to enter Fort Santiago when they were about to say goodbye to Dr. Rizal. So the torch is passed to us, and what have we done individually with our own lives to contribute to nation building as Lolo Pepe or Lolo Jose has done? Hindi ko alam ko ano ang bayani pero magaling. Talagang magaling siya. It comes from each and every one of our forebears. Teodora, Francisco, Masyano, Saturnina, Narcisa, Olinda, Lucia, Maria, Josefa, and Soledad. We knew that they carried a very sacred family history with them. Each story that they would tell about each member of the family was like all about human sacrifices and um, you know you just can't imagine the persecution they also underwent. All for the love, for a, for a noble cause. Yet the story of Jose Rizal is bigger than us, bigger than the story of one family from Calamba, Laguna. It is a story not just of family, but of country. In this way, he is not just our Lolo, he is everyone's. Hopefully I could be at least a little one-tenth, one one-one-hundredth of who, who he was and what he stood for. So I guess that goes for all of us. He died for, for everyone, eh? not just, you know, uh, for us. For many Filipinos, Rizal seems to be a fading and very distant memory. Yet his voice transcends time and legend. Lolo Jose still speaks to his family and his friends. Here he is writing to his mother on September 25, 1895. My very beloved mother, I am writing to tell you that I'm in good health as always. I kiss your hand fondly, and I ask you for your blessing. Rizal to his only brother, Pashano, on December 29, 1896. My dear brother, Pashano, it's been four years and a half since we've seen each other. I don't believe this is due to lack of affection, either on my part or yours, but because knowing each other so well, we don't need words to understand each other. Rizal to one of his best friends, Baldomero Rojas, on December 28, 1889. Precisamente en los actuales momentos en que estamos en lucha, es importante redoblar todos los esfuerzos. Es importante sacrificarlo todo al bien de nuestra patria. Sin virtud, no hay libertad. Rizal to the Indios Bravos, dated October 5, 1889. Pinaalam ko kay Lauro na tungkol sa kanyay totoong maraming marami ang masasamang balita na ikinakalat o ikinalat na ng mga taga Madrid. Kaya nga kailangan totoong magbago siya at magbangong puri upang di na ang ngalang Indio Bravo ay huwag mabahiran. Rizal in happier times in 1893. I wish to all of you a happy new year, happier than the bygone ones engaging you to be always kind to each other and to take care of our dear old mother. Rizal writing to his mother about Josephine Bracken on March 14, 1895. Please treat Miss Josephine as a person whom I esteem and appreciate very much and whom I don't want to see exposed and abandoned. Your affectionate son, who loves you very much. Rizal to his lover, Josephine Bracken. Josephine, Josephine, to these shores you came in quest of a dwelling place, a nest. Like an emigrating swallow, if your fortune you must follow to Shanghai, China, or Japan, don't forget that on these shores beats for you the heart of one. 
Rizal in his final letter to his family on the eve of his execution. Os pido perdón del dolor que os ocasionó, pero un día u otro yo tenía que morir. Y más vale que muera hoy en toda la plenitud de mi conciencia. Rizal saying goodbye to his parents. Queridos padres y hermanos, dad gracias a Dios que me conserva la tranquilidad antes de mi muerte. Muero resignado esperando que con mi muerte os dejen paz. Ah, es mejor morir que vivir sufriendo. Consolaos. Rizal's message to future generations. Os recomiendo que os perdonéis unos a otros las pequeñeces de la vida y tratad de vivir unidos en paz y en buena armonía. Tratad a nuestros ancianos padres como quisierais ser tratados por vuestros hijos después. Amadlos mucho en memoria mía. En Rizal's final plea for acceptance. Mahabag naman kayo sa akin kawawang si Josephine. His tale ushers all Filipinos into our turn and place. The rest of the journey is our true inheritance. It is this connection, more than a bloodline, that binds us to the little boy Pepe who was the student, scholar, painter, athlete, political thinker, clown, lover, artist, actor, writer, mason, world traveler, exile, the first Filipino, the martyr of Bagumbayan. He will forever be all these great things. More than that, he will always be our Lolo Jose. <laughs>